What's up, kin folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Today on the show, we're going to have Monday Night Football in March. Let's talk about Trevion Henderson choosing to commit to the Ohio State and how that affects the University of Oklahoma. Baker Mayfield is out here getting his Kevin Spacey on, and I'm not talking about Frank Underwood. How the NFL draft will work and how it's going to be different is Maryland. Yes, that Maryland loading up on a football team that might be worth the dog on. Comparing Spencer Rattler to Jalen Hurts or Baker Mayfield or Kyler Murray is not the way to do this. Take a look at what his 2019 classmates did and you can get some perspective on what you might be able to expect from him in a year where he would be a first year starter. Also, let's talk a bit about how Chinese basketball is really going to give us an idea of what is possible in the age of the virus. But first, I want to talk about conference realignment because I submit to you now in this age where people are saving and holding on to what they got to try to figure out what's going to happen next and we're watching folks that are just going, you know what, those things that we were going to go build Probably going to put those off. We're finding out places like the Big 12, the SEC are trying to come up with ways to allow their coaches to operate remotely and virtually. But there's going to be a cash grab at the end of this because people are realizing how strong or not strong they are as a group or independently. But that's the same as it's always been. And that's what's interesting to me. The granddaddy of all conferences is the Southeastern Conference, right? But you probably thought that it was one of the first. It was not. It formed when 13 schools from the South and the West of the Appalachians left a 23-member conference called the Southern Conference, which included among those 13 that became the SEC, Suwanee, University of the South, doesn't even play top-level football anymore. Georgia Tech and Tulane were also members of that conference. The conference had 10 members for roughly a quarter century, 1966 to 1991, at which time it added Arkansas from the Southwestern Conference and then eventually independent South Carolina. The Southwestern Conference added Texas Tech in 1958, and that gave it nine total. The Big Seven added Oklahoma State the same year to become the Big Eight. The Intercollegiate Conference of Faculty Representatives added Michigan State in 1953, bringing its membership to 10, and that became the Big Ten. Did not get officially named that until the year I was born, 1987. Seven schools left the Southern Conference to form the Atlantic Coastal Conference, right? The ACC in 1953. At this time, Georgia Tech was still in the SEC, the nine-member Pacific Coast Conference, which included Idaho, no, Utaho, was folded in 1959, and replaced by the Athletic Association of Western Universities, the AAWU, which is wildly ironic. The four, it was also the forerunner of the Pac-8 and what became the Pac-12 and is now the, or Pac-10 and now the Pac-12. The only mid-major conference that still exists in the same form that it existed in then, the Mid-American, the MAC, where we get MACTION. And it was going through significant turnover in the 1950s with two mid-majors, the Mountain States Conference and the Border Intercollegiate Athletic Association that were vying for that mid-major status. Both of those are defunct now. And then in the 70s, we got what we think of as modern college football because football became stratified into three divisions, one, two, and three in 1973. The separation of Division 1A and Division 1AA in 1978 became a thing. And then along with them, oh my God, a playoff, a real live playoff with a bunch of teams in it where everybody got a shot to play for a national championship. What a novel and radical idea. And then at the FBS level or at the time the Division 1 level, we got what is known as the Bowl series and bowl alliance. And then we got bowl inflation. 1970, there were 11 bowl games. In 1990, there were 19. Last year, 40. During this time that we saw 1AA football become big business and we saw 1A football become enormous 
business. We also saw a boon for football independence. This led to teams like the University of Pittsburgh being able to claim a mythical national championship in 1976. It also led to the rise of Penn State and Miami as independents because they could schedule whoever they wanted and then they would be awarded national championships by voters and play in what was called a de facto national championship game that was probably the Orange Bowl, probably the Rose Bowl. You know what time it is. It's also during this time that we saw the Big East rise. Syracuse, Boston College added Pittsburgh in 1982 but refused to add Penn State at the time, which I still don't get. And the Metro Conference had Florida State, Virginia Tech, and South Carolina, among others. It no longer exists. And now what we think of as the Big East is really the Catholic Seven. But at one time, we were talking about what? West Virginia and Miami? And Miami's just been interloping all through college football. But it was in the 90s that we got to see the SEC become dominant when it added Arkansas and South Carolina to reach that 12 number. And the money started flowing. We also got ruling the airwaves on Saturdays. And from there, we get to see the ACC snap up Florida State. We get to see the Penn State added, or get to see Penn State added to the Big Ten. And we get to see the Big East try to turn up their nose at people. And then that's why the Big East is becoming the Big East. We saw the Big Eight deal a death blow to the Southwestern Conference when it added not just Texas and Texas A&M, but Texas Tech and Baylor, thanks to Texas politicians. And here we are yet again talking about what conference realignment is going to look like because Nebraska ends up bolting for the Big Ten. Colorado bolts for the Pac-12. And now the Pac-12 is on one leg before we started dealing with what we're dealing with right now. And we're talking about being able to cripple it. So it'll be interesting to see what schools like Texas and Oklahoma, which have been living high on the hog here of late choose to do, will they keep the Big 12 intact, which is a conference that they really hold up? Will they go back to being independents? Will they just join the SEC and make the SEC even more powerful and cripple other conferences like the Pac-12? Notre Dame is going to continue to be Notre Dame because of its endowment and so much. They're both academically sound and athletically sound, and that is why they're allowed to participate in an open marriage with the ACC where they only have to play five games in conference, then they get to keep their independent status. So next year, they get to play Clemson. They also get to play USC. It'll be real fun to watch how that continues to go as we head into this era of TV contracts coming up for renewal because the folks that oversee these negotiations are mostly Gen Xers and Boomers. And that is to say they value television. They value broadcast television. They value ESPN. But we are seeing what streaming is doing right now at this particular juncture. We're seeing more than ever people are reaching for their on-demand services and they're really questioning whether or not they need things like ESPN, whether or not they need things like Fox Sports 1 part of their cable packages that really drive up the bill. And now when we are all in a crunch and we are all trying to figure out what to do next, it'll be wild to see if Google becomes a player, if Amazon becomes a player, if YouTube TV becomes a player in this age where college football is going to be thirsty and we're going to be thirsty for it. We are going to go wherever it goes. Who's going to offer you the best deal? Can you get the best deal by going streaming only? Is the American way ahead of the Big 12 in that it already had its ESPN Plus in in place and its deal in place? Whereas the Big 12 is putting on games that not everybody wanted to see. Not for nothing, y'all, but OU in Texas, when they play each other, is always going to be the biggest regular season game in the Big 12. And they have made that a part of the cable package. What if that game became a part of the streaming package? Be interesting. When we come back, Mayberry and I are going to chop it up about Trevion Henderson and OU's 2021 running back situation. You're listening to the RJ Young Show on your own for sports, the sports animal. 